Regalia is made possible in part by Bernina of Oklahoma City, providers of quality, precision sewing machines. And by War Child Society, designers of native apparel, t-shirts, decals, and more. And by generous contributions from viewers like you. We are back. We are back here at Making Regalia, based here in Concho, Oklahoma home of the Southern Arapaho, Southern Cheyenne tribes of Oklahoma. Got none other than after so many times of begging and crying, I got Vernon Street to come back on the show. Hi. Thank you very much, Vernon, for coming back on the show. My pleasure. So what do we got planned for today? We are going to applique a tie. A tie? Yes. All right, we're gonna throw some native designs on it just in case you knew you have those special functions you can go to. Birthday parties, you know, weddings, you know, natives are always getting hitched up like four times, right? Right. There's also court or arena director. <laughs> right. You never know. You might, you know, the funny thing is that I actually got a warrant one time. And <laughs> I, I hate to say this, but, you know, like, um, I won't say Oklahoma City, but, yeah, it was Oklahoma City. <laughs> I, I got a warrant one time and I had a house. I got a warrant for uh, not putting my trash cans um, on the side of my house oh. so many feet from the curb. And I thought I was, you know... Tell the truth. I, hey. No, literally. <laughs> I really did. I had to go to court. And um, the court, like, actually, they pulled me out of court. And the cop came to my house. He was like, hey, we got to take you to court. I was like, really? And so I went on the court. And then the judge looked at it. And he was like, what's this charge? And he was like, oh, this is trash cans. And they, he actually threw it out. So, well, it was probably because you were wearing a tie like I we're going to make today. I knew. Mean, I did have a tie. But <laughs> this time, we're going to have to make a native tie. There so. you go. Just in case. So I'm probably going to get thrown in anyway. So. <laughs> But uh, so, you know, you know, this is one of the cool things because I, I like taking designs, you know, that are always, you know, kind of like for the more native and stuff like that and make it into the more modern day and age and clothing line. So this is right up my alley. Um, you know, I think we're going to do some geometrics and kind of throw some war child on there. Too, Absolutely. Right? Uh, Walmart and all of your other retail stores are making lots of money off of our Native American designs. Well, you can go put money in their pocket or you can make your own and you can incorporate your family designs or a popular clothing line such as War Child like oh, we're going to do today. So, Verna, um, you know, how you been? Where you been at these days and stuff? I've been a little bit of everywhere. I was in Fargo recently at the first Crossroads powwow, and I just attended my first powwow in Canton, Oklahoma. Oh, home of the Southern Cheyenne Raffle yes, people. Yes, it right was on. awesome. Yeah, you know, I, I know our specials sometimes tend to run a little bit late. That's just kind of how we do things around here. But we always have fun. You know, all the celebrations are always good ones. So I'm glad you got it was to come awesome. out. So, um, also, how's the dance studio, uh, studio going? It's great. We are getting new students by the day. Right, right. And you work with all ages from, like, the toddlers on the way up, right? Yes. I actually just got two new students who were in the golden age category. Well, you know, it's, it's you know, it's, it, learning is always something about life, you know, and you're never too old to learn something new. So, um, you know, just for one thing, you know, if people want to learn, you know, around your vicinity, how do they get a hold of you? You can just put my name in on Facebook, Verna Street, or um, hit me up on my email. It will be posted later at the end of the show. Right on, Brenda. That's cool. You know, it's always good to give back. You know, I, I know you're a championship dancer and, you know, it always feels good that sometimes just to give back, you know, so it inspires people that they can take this and, you know, dance wherever, you know, and take them, you know, where dance takes them, you know, some places they might have never been to. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're going to just jump right into this on this tie. Um, we're going to start doing geometrics, right? Yes. Okay. We're working with some scraps from a previous project, which yeah. I hold on to scraps if anyone's ever been to my studio. Th this is a good idea. And the funny thing is uh, this ribbon work, uh, I actually did this for my shorts, for my dance shorts. I actually put cool. the ribbon around the legs of the, on my shorts. And um, I had some left over, so, you know, just go half and, you know, knock this out. We're going to make some designs out of it. Works for me. Okay. Well, he has taken his scrap of ribbon that you see here, and he's going to explain how he um, cut the actual design. Okay. It's a whirlwind design, I believe you said, right? Yeah, it's a whirlwind design, very easy geometric step. Um, what it is, is you're, you're cutting out like triangles, and the best way to do it is cut out, you know, like squares, and then cut it, slit down the side of it, and that may, creates two triangles. Um, but first, you know, you got to measure your tie, and if you look, most ties on average are three inches in width. Um, the, the actual like uh, ribbon work that we had is a little bit longer. It's two inches, uh, but you know, it, once you have two different pieces, you have to actually multiply that by two. So this would actually come out to four inches. So it's gonna be a little bit too big. So what I had to do is actually take one of these colors off. And what I did is I removed the blue just by cutting, taking my scissors and cutting off the blue. And that 
somehow some miraculous way came out to an um, inch, inch and a half. Now multiplied by two is three inches, very which good. is perfect for the tie. You know, it's going to like go right on the corner all the way to the very end. So it's going to work. Um, one thing when you do this, if you look, you'll actually take, and this is the square that I cut out. You'll see it's the same color and stuff. Uh, once you cut it, it's actually two different colors. So when you do this, you can actually keep these for another time. You'll have uh, two different triangles, two different whirlwind designs. Um, what other designs are we going to be working with? Are we going to do some applicated today? Too? Yes, we are taking the um, one of the emblems from your um, clothing line, War right. Child, and um, it is right over here. We just printed this out on the computer. The computer and a copier is one of your best friends when you're a seamstress. It, it cuts a lot of time. So we printed this image out, and instead of tracing it onto the heating bond, one of our great sponsors, we just taped it so that we can cut once and we cut out a step of actually having to trace the design onto the heating bond. Then we will iron it to um, the color of our choice, which will be red on the right and white on the left, and then cut and re-iron to the tie. Yeah. So I'm gonna leave that to you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, one thing is uh, I must mention is like this is uh, like this picture is going this way. So if we're going to do this correct and anatomically correct to oh, my company, um, <laughs> you can actually put the red on this side and the white on that side. Because oh. if you do it opposite, if we did it just like the picture, it's going to come out backwards. <laughs> a a yoga tie then. Eh? <laughs> so, you know, just remember that, you know, whenever you're doing designs and stuff like that, always do it uh, the opposite way. Because if you want a warrior to go this way, you know, you trace it on the on the paper it's going to go the opposite way so Very just good. henceforth you know fy for the people out there so uh what we're going to do and you said you're going to trace this in or what well actually we don't have to trace it since we printed it okay. it's already there so um let's go ahead and iron the whirlwind designs down so i can start sewing that and then you can iron this to the white and red at the okay. same time it's called teamwork you know, all right all working right. together so what I like to do, if we're going to do a tie, I kind of, I'm, I'm kind of not, not, kind of nitpicky about this. I'm kind of a perfectionist. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to like put a little pencil mark in here to uh, draw me a straight line. That will kind of give me an eyeball where I can make my, uh, my whirlwind almost perfect. So I'm kind of looking at the center of the bottom of the tie and just kind of run my ruler up and kind of keeping a straight line. And what I'm going to do, let's see, just eyeballing it. I'm trying to get the dead center of the tie. Another way to get the center is if you fold the tie in half. Mm -hmm. And you can crease it by hand. Sometimes that's enough, but if it's not, you can lightly take the iron to make a, a crease so there are no pencil marks in case the design doesn't take up the entire center of the tie. You don't want to have to erase or have, you know, um, pencil markings on your tie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's always <laughs> tricks to everything that you do on this show. So there is. So what I'm going to do is I guess we're going to go with this one, this kind of color. And when I do ribbon work, I, I usually don't pull off the heat bond because it, it kind of holds everything together, and I, I, I stitch everything together. And what I'll do is the lighter color, um, lighter colors, I'll leave the heat bond on there. Because once I pull them off, sometimes uh, if you iron it, 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 it tends to blend with the color whatever you're ironing underneath it. So it, say if, if I took off the paper, which I did on this one, if I iron it here, it's going to kind of turn this a little bit bluish. Oh, yeah. So like sometimes what I'll do is I'll leave the paper on there. The darker colors, I'll actually pull like the heat bond off. And that way, you know, it, you don't really have to, you won't That's see it. That's a great idea. Through. So like this red one here, I'm just going to pull the heat bond off. Because it won't be transparent when you iron it. And pulling off. And sometimes it's just really hard in this particular case to pull the heating bond because it's such a small area to work with. Yeah, sometimes I'll pull my seam ripper out and I'll just, you know, I'll just rip Me it. too. Just as long as it has a little bit of glue to adhere to the tie, we're good to go. If there are some missing places where um, the heating bond doesn't secure to the tie, I love this product, by the way. Um, it's called Fabric Tack, and this is absolutely one of the best products out there for a seamstress. It's a glue that is permanent, but you can sew through it, and it leaves no gumming on your needle. It is such a good glue that you can um, use it for jingle dresses, for the tabs. 
if you were in a last minute um, repair, you could, you know, glue fringe that's come apart on your leggings and it will actually stay. I've actually forgotten to fix it and it stayed for quite I a few powwows. I think we've all done that where it just heat bond and it says so on it and just, oh yeah, I'll fix it next week. <laughs> I've done that so many times. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of uh, gluing on there. You know, I'm looking at my little guideline and uh, just kind of following it and eyeballing it, trying to make this as perfect as possible. There you go, Ferna. Now, Thank it is you. perfect right now. Don't be messing this thing up. So. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. We could try and go ahead and sew it with just the um, small amount of um, glue that we have from the heating bond. But I like to just make sure with the fabric tack, because it doesn't gum up the needle, it's one of the best products I've actually ever used. Even heating bond, if you use the Ultra, will gum up your needle, but this won't. Oh, really? Yes, and it stays. It's, it's awesome. I have to give credit to my good friend, Acacia Red Oak. She showed me this when we were making jingle dresses for the Sioux Falls Empire powwow. Sioux Falls Empire. I remember yes. that powwow. That was a pretty good one. It was awesome. They had a, a two-woman or two-man team dance, and so the dancers went all out matching dresses, matching shawls, and... It's always good to watch people because everyone has their little tricks of the trade that you can learn from. And this is one of them. All right, now we're going to do some stitching. Okay. And while I'm starting the stitching, um, we're going to kill two birds with one stone. You may work on this? Yes. All right. He's going to um, use the iron and Secure this to half white, half red, correct? Exactly. And you have to make sure it's on the right side. Don't mm -hmm. forget. Gotcha. Okay, I am would normally start with a zigzag stitch. However, since the design is so close to the edge, it could bunch or pucker, and I really want to, you know, make this look good for um, JR's next court date. <laughs> so we're going to go with the straight stitch first just to secure it so it's not hard to work with. We want a smooth stitch. I will go back over that side with the zigzag, but I just wanted to make sure it was secure first. Here we don't have to do that. It's not on the edge. I'm not sure if they can see that on this side here, but I'm on the opposite side. So I'm gonna switch back to my zigzag, making sure that you keep the line of zigzag par with the design. You could split the design and zigzag, but you won't get um, as finished of a stitch. Instead of turning, and going back this way, we're just gonna go straight across and keep the stitch flowing. So now we've actually finished uh, our sewing for our whirlwind design and we also had a little addition to that. What do we do? We took a brass sequin and uh -huh. um, we just threaded a needle and knotted it on the back side, pulled it through, came up through the center of the sequin. We added a center bead. Mm -hmm. Then we came back down the same Hole, and now we're going to tie it off. Okay. It adds so it gives a, little a little decoration to flare, it. Flare, right? yeah, a little flare there. All right. Plus, uh, sometimes, you know, you make mistakes, believe it or not. Right. So, um, in the center, maybe the design didn't meet up so well, or your stitching didn't work so well. So, sequins come and rhinestones are a great way to cover up mistakes and to add a little flare. So we have the sequin in place. We're going to move to the next step, which is the buffalo skull. Right on. So how did you come up with this design? Uh, I, I, I like to draw different animals and stuff like that. And, you know, I've, I've always kind of drawn buffalo skulls. And this is kind of my, my own spin on it. You know, it's, it's just something I've came up with through the years and stuff. So, Okay, to explain what I'm doing, I am ironing the buffalo skull with to... two different colors. Yeah, two different colors to a center, I mean a background. Mm -hmm. This is because there is so much detail 
in this design, um, I felt like I would lose it on the tie. Also, because it's a sh silky material, it could pucker with all the cuts and turns once you're zigzagging. Silky smooth. Silky smooth. So, I also took a piece of paper and put it over the top to protect the design from... Getting damaged from the heat and stuff. Very good. Yeah, and you know, if you ever use a piece of paper, it, it, henceforth, it's always best to use a blank piece of paper. Yeah. We don't actually have one, so. But you know, if you don't, always use like whatever's written on the top or whatever on, on the, t uh, the side of like where it's the, the, the iron's gonna touch. Because if you use it on the other side, sometimes the ink will actually rub off onto the material, causing you know unforeseen disasters. That's right, and um, you do run the risk of um, getting film or residue on the iron. But there are great iron cleaning products that you can pick up at your local Joann's or Walmart. Yeah, usually I, I actually have two irons. Uh, one's for you know making regalia. One's actually for ironing your clothes. Sometimes, hopefully, you don't get them mixed up because. You go to work with sequins on you, and you know those are in there really good. So, so true. It did not adhere, so I'm going to place it back on. We probably need to make sure it's on the correct setting. Always check your settings. Um, they are pretty much right on. If you're using a silk, use the silk setting. Otherwise, you can burn your material. I have done that lots of times when I've been in a rush. Yeah. The heating bond wasn't. Sticking and fast enough, and so I upped it a notch, and they're starting over. Yeah, and you know, sometimes when you do use applique stuff, I, I tend to not even put any water in there, because sometimes the steam will cause uh, the material to ripple up, and then it kind of messes up your design. So, so I, I, I run my irons dry, so. <laughs> Good to know. Depending on the thickness of the material you're using depends on how long you have to keep the heat on the design for it to actually adhere. Mm -hmm. Can you take that from me? Got it. Sometimes you'll run into where it didn't actually secure, but I think we got it this time. So we're going to zigzag the buffalo skull to this black medallion. All right. I'm going to use the same color stitch as the Buffalo skull. And the reason behind that is because it's such a small design and such little cuts and turns. If I decided to use another thread, I would have to make sure my thread was very, very close together, mm -hmm. not missing. You get all the detail. Very true. So, with the power of Hollywood and cameras and whatnot, we've come to the part where we're going to attach our other design. And what Verna's already done is she's actually uh, gone through the sewing and um, attached the, the bull buffalo skull onto the other piece of material. From here out, she's going to iron it at a perfect placement on the tie. And then after that, we're going to attach it by sewing it on there, right? Correct. Okay. Um, just to um, let you know what I did, I zigzagged the design. It is a small design which made it a little difficult, but it's all what you want to put into the project. If it's for sale, you have to look at, I say, your market. If you're trying to make a quick sale, you have to think, is it worth the extra work or detail? Are you going to get the money you deserve out of that extra work? Some people just want to have, you know, good work behind their name, like myself. Mm -hmm. So um, I take the time to switch up my threads, which does take a lot more time to change the threads, to do the stitching close together, to make sure that the design is, um, you know, accurate. But in the long run, it looks great. Yeah, I, I like it because when you do change out threads, you add another color to it. And, you know, you can also uh, show more detail in the design work, too. You know, if it's little bit humps here or there, you know, you can see the contours of what your design is supposed to be meant to see. So true. Now, I do recommend using the same thread as the design when, um, when you can't get your stitching close together. Depending on the material, sometimes the closer your stitching is, it could pucker. In yeah. that case, you can prevent that by using a, um, a um, interfacing, or what is what is that product called? Mm, I have no clue. I can show you. It's if you want to grab one of those shirts, it's on the inside of the shirts, and it's to give it extra weight. Um, it adds extra weight to the design so that the puckering is to a minimum. Um, I can show you from the inside of a shirt that I made previously. Uh huh. I tried to sell it. It didn't sell. I think it was too oh, small. This is nice. Okay. For our buff Native American men, so it's all I muscle. All overed muscle. on it, and it's my shirt now. This is a um, tearaway 
I think it's an interfacing. Um, it's at your Joann's. I don't think they have it at Walmart sometimes, but yeah. this one is porous. So after it's sewn, it's really easy to tear away from the design. Okay. So it gives it a little bit more texture. So when you sew, it gives yes. it like, okay, so you can place it a little bit better. Yes. And I use that whenever there's lightweight or satin fabric. So now we, we're almost to our sewing, but you know what we wanted to do is we want to check our stitching before we actually worked on the project, right? Yes. You don't want to commit because it is really hard taking out stitching and it can mess up the entire design. So we take a scrap, like you see here, and we test out the design that we're going to use on the outside edge of the buffalo skull design. We chose a um, arrow design and on this wonderful Bernina machine that was donated, you can adjust the stitching very um, What's well, it, the word? It, yeah, and it, the cool part about this machine is uh, my machine, this one's digital, it shows a screen where depending on where you are in the stitch, it, you could be at a high, uh, like, uh, high point in the stitch, it'll show you exactly where you're at. So on mine, I usually have to eyeball or just guess it or just, you know, hope for the best when I, you know, hit the pedal. This one actually shows you uh, where exactly you are in the stitch marks. So now I'm going on the outside of the um, black circle that's behind the buffalo skull. So we are at the end of our Native American design tie here, all the way straight from Walmart. We have bumped it up thing. It's probably worth about $150 now, right? That's what I'm asking. You know, I still wonder who is George? You know, I mean, I see his products all over, you know, Walmart, and I don't know who George is. <laughs> George Growing Thunder. Right, right. <laughs> Give a shout out to shout George. Shout out. Yeah, so we got our uh, tie. We're ready to go. And you know? we're arguing over whether we tie the knots on the back side or not. He that doesn't. I, I do. Um, it's just because you don't want it to unravel. It's all up to you. I do burn my threads because I, I do that. don't like it just being messy. You have to be careful not to burn the actual fabric. So. And, and when you do burn it, yeah, it, it does give it a clean look because it kind of like uh, melts and stuff like that. And if you have some material that might be um, past the stitch line, it'll melt it and it will come back. And it kind of gives it that cleaner cut look to it. So I would even um, take a Sharpie at times if, you know, there's a little gap and, you, you know, it just is taken away from the tie. Then I would add, you know, a little of a Sharpie to make sure that the design looks complete. We did have to take the sequin back off, so we're going to oh, yeah. reattach that. Um, one of the things uh, I wanted to make sure we touched on was a clear presser foot. Using a clear presser foot will help you um, keep your stitches more to the design. If you don't have a clear presser foot, then you can't see where the next line is. So that yeah. causes for um, distortion of your your wonderful buffalo skull here. Yeah, and you know, I, I don't know that. I've really never really used one. I mean, I've always had janky machines and never knew what one was until she actually told me what it was. Uh, I've never played around with a clear one, so I've always just eyeballed it and just, you know, went with the force and just, you know, somehow <laughs> made it work right. It's not such a big deal with the bigger designs, but it is with the smaller. You can't see where your turns are if um, you're using the solid presser foot. Yeah. Um, another um, suggestion, is to make sure your iron is clean exactly because we did have a little mess up but with a little awesome or a little scrape lightly scraping of the material you can get rid of sometimes you know um, a little residue that has adhered to the project you know by the um, iron so now what you're going to do is just stitch in back the medallion right a little tiny little yes we're adding our flare a flat it is hard for the needle to go through now because of the different stitches, but it will be worth it and make the project just come together. And this is just, you know, something that you don't really have to do. It's just kind of a little decoration, you know, like a little, little add to it, you know, a little bit more. Yeah, we added the, um, the arrow designs to the whirlwind as well so that it would tie in with the buffalo skull design. Mm -hmm. This is my first tie, you know. That's cool. First timer. Now you are ready to court in uh, court order to tell you that I am awesome. <laughs> now, as soon as I get this needle through here, we're going to have you put the tie on. Now and that's the true on. test to see if he knows how to tie his own tie. <sighs> we, we, we know how to make ties. We don't know how to tie ties. That's the only problem. 
I, I literally don't. I'm, and the funny thing is that when I do do my ties, when I do go to work, uh, I tie them on backwards. It's the only way I can get them. And then I take them off and then I flip them back around and I, I cinch them up. Somehow it works, but you know. Whatever works. And I, I know about the double Windsor and all that. And I've, I like that style. I just, I can't figure it out. I have but no idea days, what that is. I imagine one of our viewers would probably show so me a documentary on how to tie ties. So. Pinterest is great for that. But also there are clip-on ties and... With that, you can actually add the detail with, I don't even know what that's called, this spot right here, the, the knot. The knot. Yeah. You can act, actually add designs or, you know, sequins or flare there if it's a clip-on tie. Yeah. There are so many designers out there, um, just to name a few, Disa Tatusis, Orlando, uh, Duke, um, how do you say his name? Duke, Doogie? Close enough. Close enough. That'll He's work. amazing. That's all I know. And um, we have some of our local powwow seamstresses like uh, Phyllis White Cloud. And that's actually who inspired me to do this project. She does great incorporations with our native designs and our modern clothing. Also, don't want to forget uh, Shude Victors, too. He makes really awesome ties yes. out of broadcloth. So we come to the conclusion here on Making Regalia with our Native American tie. I want to thank all the other artists out there that do this kind of work. Um, some of the people that you might know? Well, Nani Hamilton, she's a great seamstress, and Phyllis White Cloud, they're local. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, Orlando Dugai. Also, Shude Victors, he makes yes. really awesome ties with uh, broadcloth. Yes, when it comes to Native Americans and talent, it's endless. Yeah, so, you know, we have a finished product here. And hopefully, you know, you can design your own ties, you know, just in case you need to make something for some kind of an occasion that you might need. Um, but, you know, once again, you know, I thank everyone for coming in. I want to thank you for coming on the show thank all you. the way from North Carolina. What up? Yeah, and I want to thank all, you know, like all your dance class members, you know, for tuning in, you know. And, you know, hopefully, you know, they, they can make ties like this. Before we go, I have another gift for you. What? Yes, we give uh, where I'm from, and it's a water bottle. All right. I will yes. definitely use this because I'm getting back into training. I'm starting to run a little bit more of these days, so I uh, definitely need one of these. Now, know? it's for water, JR. Right on, right on. <laughs> <laughs> no mixes. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You and never thank know. you for having me. Well, you know, thank you for coming on the show. Once again, you know, I want to thank all our viewers out there for tuning in for Making Regalia. I want to thank Powell's.com, uh, FNX, First Nations Experience out of San Bernardino, California, uh, Bernina of Oklahoma City, uh, Heat Bond, um, and everybody else. And I uh, want to thanks for tuning in. I hope. what -o. Previous episodes of Making Regalia with Joaquin Lone Lodge can be found online at catv47.com. Feel free to go back and check out Season 1 as Joaquin teaches various aspects of regalia construction. You'll learn how to make jingle dresses, men's southern straight shirts, beading, and more. You can also contact Joaquin on our Facebook page. Thanks for watching Making Regalia.